Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. My, 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 you're making a fuss dressing today, Bo Brummel. I'm not making a fuss. Oh, for a silly little baseball game. There's nothing silly about a baseball game. There's nothing little either. I wonder why going to a mere baseball game inflates a man's conceit so. Probably because baseball is the one sport which is still sacred to the male sex. That's a dull reason. Baseball is the... It's the last outpost of a man's dignity. Baseball can be dull. You're saying that merely proves my point, Mrs. Norton. For instance, Mr. Norton. Well, is there such thing as a female baseball player? Mm. No. Was the home run king of the diamond a lass in skirts? He may not have worn skirts, but I think I remember the name was Babe Ruth. Very funny. Oh, yes, David, as much as you like, you can't really exclude us. Even from baseball. You're in a remarkably cutting mood this morning. Not at all. You're just so cute getting all dressed up for a mere baseball game. I am merely wearing a sports jacket. Flannel trousers and shoes. I'll wring your neck in a minute. <laughs> Why don't you wear a bow tie around One more your... word out of you and I'm going... Aren't bow ties fashionable for baseball this season? You look so cute in bow ties. No, I never wear them. You should. They go nicely with your chin. One, two, three. Three strikes and you're out. <laughs> you remember that much? You know, I'm surprised at Roger going to the ball game with you. He's not a very sporty kind of man, is he? Well, baseball's a great deal more than a mere sport. It's a very intellectual game. Oh, you mean during those long pauses when nothing happens. Everybody gets intellectual. Oh, shut up. Yeah, but I guess, I guess that's what you mean. Mm, if you knew more about the game, you'd realize that strategy is the dominant factor. I think hitting the ball way out over the fence, that's more dominant. More fun, too. <laughs> Anybody can hit the ball. Can you? Well, I'm not a baseball player. Oh, I see. And everybody who knows knows the man with brains wins the game for his team. Who's he? Well, he's a catcher who signals the pitcher what kind of ball to throw at the plate, or the coach who decides what kind of a hit it should be. Hit is a hit in any language. A bunt isn't. When to bunt, that's strategy. Stealing bases, double plays... Putting in a pinch hitter, using a southpaw pitcher, that's strategy. Mm. Every man who watches a ball game has the, the fun of trying to guess and foretell what strategy a team's going to use. I still think hitting the ball is the most fun. Oh, what's the use of talking? You, you have a closed mind. Well, at least I have a mind. Darling, have you got good seats? Great. Roger got them. They're, they're in a box right behind the home plate. Oh, I think baseball words are so cute. Bunt, plate, southpaw. What are some others? I wouldn't tell you. No, I meant it seriously. All the more reason. Oh, you get so stuffy about things. Hey, aren't you dressed yet? What's the big ride? Oh, nothing. Except you'd think you were going to a ball instead of to a baseball game. <laughs> you really feel superior this morning, don't you? Very, very. You think Roger likes baseball. I think he's too fastidious. Uh, oh, he'd never get excited and shout. Oh, and what if he gets warm, David? Oh, he must hate being warm. What are you driving at? Mm, nothing. Now, listen to me a minute. These tickets are Roger's tickets. He invited me to go with him. He's going because he wants to. No, no matter what you say about it, he's going. Who said he wasn't? Well, I wouldn't take a woman to a baseball game if... if no, even if she knew what the score was. In case you're interested... This particular woman is not trying to work you up into inviting her. No, I'm not. This woman is not interested in what the score is or will be or... So just stop worrying about it, well, As long as that's settled. Come on, let's go down to breakfast. All right. I'm still an architect, and I still have to get to the station and get to the office and support you and your son. I'm ready. I've been waiting for you, Mr. Architect. Don't look so grumpy. Why shouldn't I be? I have every reason to. Aren't you delighted that it's a nice day? Mm-hmm. Perfect baseball weather. Hope you don't get a sunstroke. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I wonder who that is. I'll answer it. You tell Bertha I'm ready for my coffee. For some eggs, too. No eggs today. Oh, yes, eggs today. If you're going to eat popcorn and frankfurters all afternoon, you better line your stomach with eggs. Only girls go to ball games for the menu. Hello. Oh, Roger, good morning. I'm all ready. 
Oh, meet the office. Oh, you're kidding, of course. Well, you can't have a cold in the middle of August. Oh, oh you had to go to the movies, huh? You sure you can't come along? Well, that's too bad. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Hey, what about your ticket? Anyone special you'd like to give it to? Well, of course, I can find somebody to go with me, but I'm sorry it won't be you. Well, I'll, I'll call you when I get to town. Goodbye, Roger. Who is that? Roger. Oh, reminding you about the ball game? Is he as excited as you are? I am not excited. Oops, oops, sorry. sorry. He's sick. He has a cold. Oh, poor Roger. I hope his wife's home to take care of him. It's awful to have a cold alone. From where I sit, it'd be bliss to have a cold alone. David, that means he can't go to the baseball game with you. Exactly. Well, w uh, will you go alone? I mean, why don't you invite someone to go with you? I'm just thinking if you'd give me a chance. Let me see. Now, who is there? Uh, what about Colligan? No, no, Colligan's on a fishing trip. Well, uh, what about uh, Kelly? Well, Kelly's working on a job in New Jersey. Mm. What about your brother Hartley? Gone up to Newport with Julia. Good. Well, it's funny, I can't think of anybody right now. Well, come on into breakfast. You've plenty of time to think of somebody mm, when you're in New York. Tough on Roger, isn't it? I don't know. I still think he's not the type. Little Miss Psychology. <laughs> well, name somebody who is the type. Oh, David. I'd ever so much rather you'd name her. Do you want a program or a scorecard, Claudia? No, thanks. I don't need a thing. Not even a menu. You probably wouldn't know what to do with a scorecard anyway. I'd rather watch the game. Here, our seats are over there. Hey, watch where you're going, Claudia. Oops, I'm sorry. Excuse me. David, so many people. I've never seen so many people. Excuse me, please. I suppose they all like watching baseball. <laughs> no, they're here because they don't like it. There must be something to it I don't see. Have you ever seen a baseball game? Oh, not one like this, yeah. I haven't. Hey, isn't the grass out there lovely? It's called a diamond. You don't say. I mm -hmm. wonder how they keep it so green. Ours is so burned. Well, here we are, darling. Excuse us, please. Mm, these are wonderful seats. You can see the whole game from here. Excuse me, please. Oh, that's all right, lady. Yeah, I'll go in first. The man in front of that seat is taller. Can you see over him, darling? It's more important for you to see. Oh, I'll be fine. Oh, I wish they'd begin now that I'm here. That's undoubtedly what they're waiting for. Oh, you're so sweet. Now, listen, honey. Let me, um, let me teach you a little about baseball before they start. Oh, uh, don't bother, David. Aren't you even interested? Just look at the hat that woman's wearing. She looks like an Indian with a feather. All right, all right. You don't have to listen to me. But just don't go asking me a lot of questions during the game. I promise. <laughs> Come. My wife was the same, mister. Used to take her with me, but she stays home now. Well, you've got the right idea. I made up my mind to it the day she said she thought it was unfair to have nine men in the field all against the one man at bat. That did it. <laughs> she stays home now. <laughs> it must have been tough. It <laughs> sure was. David, is that them? Yeah, here they come. Here oh, they come. Come on, you beautiful bones, murderer. That's the giants over there, isn't it, David? Yeah. Gee, look, see their underwear sticking out of their sleeves. They look like sissies. Well, there's a reason for it. I think I like the Dodgers best. They've got more sex appeal. Oh, they got savvy and know-how, lady. That's what counts. Come on, you guys. Spread them giants all over the ballpark. Murder them. So excited, David. They haven't even begun. That's, uh, that's a little Joe coming up, isn't it? Oh, uh, that's Joe Rosati batting for the Dodgers. Yeah. Joe Rosati. Sounds like something to eat. He's been hitting like an angel. Come on, Joe, right over the fence, Joe. He hasn't got a chance against us southpaw. He's a southpaw as a left-handed pitcher, darling. Oh, thank you, David. Oh, don't swing at those, you Jake. Everybody's so excited. Oh, red strike one. Come Great on, for him, come on, watch him over there. Watch him over. Come on, little Joe, over the bridge. They don't look so good to me, David. That's waiting for him, Jojo. Come on, let him go one, by. Lady. Let him go by. That pitcher certainly takes his time. He makes it look so complicated. Now he's going to knock the cover off of this one. I know it, I know it. Oh, oh, run, 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 run! Face, <laughs> face, face! Oh, that's so the matter, boy, Jojo. Come 
All right, now Muzzy Stern's up. Hey, what's he hit? Uh, 328. He'll hit a home run for sure. Come on, sweetheart! Slam it out for you! Come on, knock the cover off of it! He's awful tall, isn't he? I bet he's handsome too, Dave. Now, watch him swing, darling. Now, look at the way he stands up the plate. His feet wide apart. Uh, he's a ball player's ball player, all right. Oh, boy. Hey, oh, you sweet What a hit. Hey, hey, what a hit. Slide, you don't slide. Oh, safe on second, too. Oh. Right in the hole between first and second. Yeah. Gee, David, I thought it'd be a double play at first. Yeah, it looked that way. Let's see. Man on first, no. man on second. What a ball team. Well, well, David, you realize that if the next man hits a home run, we'll be ahead three to nothing. We've hardly even gotten started. Yes, I realize it. I realize it. Hey, we're still at the top of the batting order, too, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Hey, wait a minute there. What's the matter, darling? I thought you didn't know anything about baseball. I never said that. I thought you didn't like baseball. Oh, I didn't say that either. I just think it's dull to watch. I mean, compared to playing it, of course. Mm-hmm. How would you know? David, didn't I ever tell you I played substitute shortstop on our high school team? They were they were shorthanded. I was pretty good, too. Hmm. Oh, Mama was horrified. So you played baseball. Yeah. Well, I give up. Nothing is sacred anymore. Come on, Harry, a home run, a home run! Yeah, lady, that's right. Cross your fingers over the plate, you your bum! And you want to know something else, David? I'm not sure I do. Even watching baseball is fun with you. David, watch, look. He's, he's going to bunt instead of trying for a homer. My own wife telling me this is the end. Slide, you don't slide. You're marketing and you need a break. So you look around for that familiar Coke cooler. You're driving, and the friendly red cooler is a welcome sight when you stop for gas and oil. You meet a friend on the street, and you say, let's have a Coke, knowing the red cooler is handy. But you have a white cooler that's handy this minute, right in your own kitchen. Yes, the family refrigerator can be your private Coke cooler. All you have to do is stock up on Coca-Cola and keep plenty on ice. Then you're ready to enjoy the pause that refreshes during work or leisure hours. You're ready to offer refreshing hospitality to visitors, both expected and unexpected. Buy Coke, buy the case, and your white cooler need never be without refreshment. Say, that lady sure knew her onions when it came to baseball. <laughs> Claudia knows her onions about a lot of things. You don't say. Indeed. And uh, David is still finding out what they are. Boy, in the eighth inning, she was calling them balls like an umpire. Never underestimate the power of a woman, sir. Oh, I know better than that. All right, all right. I'm married to one. I'll bet you something else. I bet you she becomes a real ball fan. Oh, I think Claudia's too busy for that. And she likes too many other things to single out baseball. For instance? Well, for instance, Coney Island. Uh, the amusement center of the world? Mm, come around tomorrow and find out. I'll do that. So long. So long. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.